Hello everyone and welcome to episode 72 of Competitive Magic with the Carnies. I'm your host from Italy, Andrea Mengucci, and joining me with me you have Javier Dominguez from Spain. Hello everyone. And Anthony Lee from Australia. Hola. Hello everybody and we are back after uh, the last uh, batches of regional championship uh, to kind of talk to you about what was modern last weekend. Anthony, you participated in one of them, didn't you? Kind of, yeah. You can even... I can, <laughs> we can even spot you looking at the final right here that was won by James Wilk in... Uh, what was it again? Melbourne? Uh, yes, Melbourne. Yes. Um, yeah, that's me looking very thrilled for my friend Jim. More of a very happy. James, really. This is this is happy Antonio. Yeah, I always I always have a face like this for for every event. Um, I I always try to, uh, I try not to have much of an expression when an event ends. You know, out of consideration for the other finalists. Um, I had a I had a face like this for. I, I, I there's another picture of another friend of mine winning a GP where I have this expression many years ago, and I also was told I had. A very stony expression when I won my RC exactly because of this, you know. I think it's uh it's better to try to you know stay calm, but <laughs> of course, <laughs> it, does, uh, it makes for a funny either, picture. <laughs> you, yeah, you can watch the uh, podcast on my YouTube channel, or you can go search the picture at Good Games Aus Aus. Uh, that's that's where they tweeted it. It's yeah. Uh, anyway, what? outside of that, the other. Oh. The other very big news that happened this weekend was the uh, banned and restricted. Wait, 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 wait. So the big, big wait, wait, wait. So the big news is Anthony does not celebrate things. Is that what's happening here? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a lot bigger news than that. Just in general. Okay, okay. <laughs> you're saying. Okay, right, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. That a card has been banned and one has been unrestricted. We're just gonna focus on the one that's been banned, violent outburst, because. Vintage is now part of our competitive uh, topics. Thank you. Although last weekend I, I competed in a team tournament that also had featured Vintage, but we don't have to talk about that. Um, so yeah, I was um, spending my time at Four Seasons where I played a various format alongside Modern. And uh, today we're going to just kind of go over the results of the past RC and maybe kind of looking forward to the next uh, Modern that will be. I will actually play a uh, quite large modern event soon. I'll be playing in the LMS Prague, not this weekend, but the one after. So I actually have to do some uh, some proper some proper modern testing and uh, look forward to that. Sounds exciting. Okay, so Violet Outburst is banned. The the reason is of course the Cascade decks are now weakened. And um, they can't do it anymore. The Violent Outburst plus Force of Negation. Although three preliminary were won by Rhinos so far after the bans. Whereas <laughs> Living End is still uh, kind of struggling, I would say. I don't think I've seen uh, any Living End uh, doing that well. I've seen some 5 O's here and there. But uh, I definitely feel like Living End is the true loser of this ban list. What do you guys think? Well, I think it would be very fun, funny or fun. It would be funny, yeah, funny. It would be funny if the if Rhinos ends being actually better. <laughs> like it would be a classic, uh, classic magic situations where they buy a car from a deck, and then you know because Alan Pui actually plays so well with subtlety and um, unfortunate negation, it actually ends being a better card than than Outburst. Like you know, probably it makes for a better mana base and the such like. It, I don't think it's gonna be likely, but it could be the case, right? And if that's the case, that yeah. <laughs> if it were the case, it would be more likely because violent outburst is so much a bigger loss to living end, which was Rhino's truly horrible matchup. Like if it turns out that living end is just not viable without violent outburst, and so Rhino loses its worst matchup, but then also, you know, didn't have that much of a downgrade, then that's a way in which in which Rhino's could have uh, genuinely improved as a result of the ban. I think. True. Uh, that that's very true. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, if you remove a predator from a modern deck, that's like very important, right? In terms of the ecosystem of the meta game. So, yeah, I mean, I think a band like this is always exciting. Like when they touch, like I think it's there are exciting times for both. Of, like 
deck experts that they have to adapt their you know the the archetype to things and also like viewers or whatever like this always open opens a little bit of a, a door for new things to actually pop around especially with decks like rhinos like it's not the same if Yagmoth is the best deck and they ban it than if rhinos is because rhinos was very good against all decks trying to do fancy things because of force negation on the such so i mean i i will be excited if i had the tournament this weekend playing modern for sure it's a change, yeah. I don't know. Magic players, uh, magic is a game about change. I think so. Uh, any kind of change, whether it's a more organic one like new cards coming out, or one like this where something is removed, uh, they usually usually create some kind of opportunity. Whether how big or small that is is uh, variable, but in this case, I think it's not a big one, but it's still something interesting. I remember last time we talked about uh, a ban list in Modern was when Fury and Beanstalk got banned and we were talking about how maybe the ban of Fury made Scam better but it it didn't really do it so I feel like uh, now we are seeing a similar thing where people say that Rhinos might get better but I just feel like um, the, the matchup Rhinos versus Merktide was super important to a violent outburst because the instant speed opportunity of you to just you know play endurance or play outburst or play let's say you know Arcas Force of Negation Tishana you know like all of these opportunity to play instant speed was what made Teamer a very scary deck. So I think losing that angle definitely makes you weaker to Merc Tide, I think. Well yeah I think I think you are weaker to Merc Tide, Although I think that's probably outweighed by living and losing so much from Violent Outburst that maybe nobody can play it. But I also think Instant Speed only matters that much against uh, Merc Tide, I think. Like, there's not many other decks where you have to dance around with your Rhinos. You can just jam your Rhinos and then counter whatever they do with Force. So, like, I don't play into Force with Negation. It's just as good against a lot of other decks. Like, if you're playing against Amulet or something, you know, like, that's... I don't know. I just don't think Instant Speed matters outside of that matchup. Maybe okay, this doesn't, doesn't even matter that much. Yeah. Like maybe it doesn't like yeah. of course you're not having the resistance speed, but the deck is also built differently. Like the Rhinos decks now seem to be based like the like there are less of a tempo deck than before, right? And cards like the sign of Drago, whatever, or even the salty are actually good against Mortez, right? The way the deck is built. So I think we could probably like I'm I'm not sure this the new versions of the deck now are that much worse, if any, against Mortez. Like I'll have to see that on play. I don't think it's obvious. Yeah, like you, you could you could see, for example, like Ardenplay also has different properties, right? Like it's not instant, but it is reusable with cards like Teferi, Time Raveler. So and you could also see the deck shift in a direction that's better against Merktide as a result. Like maybe you downgrade from Blind Albus, but now you have Teferi, which is I think usually a pretty good card against Merktide. So And and the Scion has to be good. Like yeah. it has to be great. Like some get they're gonna be Ragaman on the draw and boom, Scion. Like <laughs> I don't know it, it's a yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> how do you mean that right like yeah I think I think I will have to I, I'm I'm not sure I I don't think there's enough reasons to say like the deck is obviously worse against Monte now it could be the case but I don't think that's necessarily the case yeah we're not sure yeah so a a card that uh, I mean this is not news or anything but a card that has been outstanding for me in uh, modern so far is pick your poison. I've played uh, several different decks so far, and I found that this card uh, with or against me now, and just so many applications. It kills, it kills like stuff like the One Ring, Urza Saga, Sign of Draco, Merkta Regent. You know, it's just it's so versatile, so good that I felt like uh, as a Merktide uh, as a Merktide player, I received this card and cast this card a lot, and it's been very very good. So this is probably <laughs> the best. Uh, the best car from um, Murders of Carlo Manor in, in, in modern, you know the 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 scry lands, the survey lands are uh, are also close to this. But I've been so so impressed by Pick Your Poison so far. I mean, this could be the best this enchant ever, right? Yeah, I think so. It just could be. I mean, that, that's a high bar, but like this could be the very best enchant ever. And it really so the, the only concern here is like it doesn't really get that much space to become better. Like, what's better than this? The same game one life. Maybe, maybe you can destroy <laughs> instead of sacrifice. Well, that's not necessarily better for constructed. It's not necessarily better because you can kill the side of Draco with X proof or the one ring that comes up. You know, like like or the one ring. Like, I think this right. one is probably the best enchant ever. 
uh, for like all formats, like the best card in this kind uh, ever printed. That's my impression. <laughs> I guess it can be better if you say that it can't be countered, so you can kill a Chalice Sun one in Legacy. Well, that <laughs> that's <laughs> still very narrow, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying like, yeah, yeah. like suddenly this effect is like playable in the format just because like how good it like how good it is like obviously there's always been enough targets for cars like this in the metagame but the cars are ne were never good enough but this one seems to to be good enough to see play in that i mean it, it's it's cool you know don't get me wrong but like i guess it's good it, it just feels like this could be also like an uncommon or rare from a modern license like you know like green command like the, the, for sure like this could be a green command right mm -hmm. like because the yeah. effect is so much better than everything else like this. I mean, that's not really how they do yeah. rarity necessarily. Like a lot of that is tied to things like complexity and applicability. And I think, so. I mean, this makes sense as a common to me. And no, I know, I know. Modern, yeah. I'm, I'm saying it's like in terms of power level, this car is like, is good enough for modern, right? And uh, yeah. we're probably going to say it's, this. It's scalable. I like that. I, I, mean, yeah. I, I, I like magic with good answers. So I'm, I'm no, happy certainly. they made this. Yeah. This is a very, yeah. very good answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so... Another, so we've mentioned, I've mentioned the Surveillance, and uh, I want to shout out to Binyu, who won the original championship in China, and his deck had four Surveillance. He got there with uh, Esper, Gorgeous Vengeance, uh, with, uh, as I said, four uh, Surveillance. Uh, sometimes I've played it with and against this deck, and I had the turn one Surveillance put Traxa in the graveyard, and that's just the same equivalent of when you play Pioneer and you consider an Arclight Phoenix in the graveyard. It feels like you just <laughs> free rolled <laughs> on turn one and the game is not going to be the same. It's uh, like a 10 percent, right? To hit Grizzabran or Atraxa. That's, yeah, that's have six. Decent. Yeah, you have yeah. Six. I mean, even if you get like... I mean, do you have any other uses for that? Not really. I mean, you can get the Mending. No. No, you have mending a... also. Yeah, it's exactly. Like a... get a, get a I mean, it's a little mending. bit narrow, but I can see why it's like good. Right, but that that's I mean getting this but not playing Cosmic Consider is kinda of surprising. I, I assume you want the lands to be the considers in this case. Yeah. Hmm. You also play with grief and solitude, so like you need uh, a lot of uh, black and white cards for the deck to function. Yeah. Oh I um, see. that makes sense, yeah. No, I I, yeah, I felt like having 10 fetches and four surveillance made this deck so consistent for curve purposes, just you know. Even in top deck mode, you always have a fetch land laying around, so you can fix your draw. Yeah, I think that the the addition of surveillance make this deck very much a contender as one of the best decks in modern. I mean, this deck was always be around. You may remember in PT Barcelona, um, Marco Vassallo came, uh, I mean, lost the winning in with this deck, and uh, since then, I would say the deck lists are changing a bit. You see the Falaji Archaeologist, another very cool interaction of this deck. Is that you can build your own uh, dig through time. You play Ephemerate of Arlaji Archaeologist, and you basically just get two cards out sure. of the top <laughs> six. A little bit better seven. than dig through what? time. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. So you play Falaji, then you get one card, and then you, you play Falaji. Then, like end of turn of your opponent, ephemerate. you ephemerate when it's free, oh, when it's safe. Okay, okay, okay. And then you just mill three, get a card, upkeep, mill three, That's get a pretty card. Pretty good. And. You, once you do that, I mean, obviously you can brick, but you look at the top seven cards with the draw step, yeah. so you can find Gorus Vengeance and and Mill Atraxa or Grizzly Brand. That's pretty good. So this deck seems very interesting. Yeah, I feel like yeah, this deck this deck is definitely is definitely like it has a lot of good cards. Uh, again, Surveillance is probably the best place to put them, and you also have the you know the Grief Ephemerate Starter or which dodges Graveyard Hate. Like for example. I played against this deck, I opened Lil Liland of the Void, I got Griefed Ephemerate, and, you know, I died a few turns later. I so, think, I think well, this deck think came it... from Ichikawa, right? Um, like, yeah. yeah, Ichikawa yeah. really yeah. popularized this deck recently. Uh, he's doing a lot of waves yeah. with Ichikawa. these combo decks, huh? <laughs> yeah. So I think yeah, one, Ichikawa... one more point here is, like, we were wrong about the lands, right? Wouldn't we? <laughs> what did we say? I think... I said it was good. The Super, the super was, Lands. I think we were not very right about this. I think we, the Super Lands are better than we thought it would, they would be. I remember saying like, Probably. well, you know... We definitely didn't anticipate four. Yeah, we definitely didn't. I I, I yeah. agree now, actually. We we, pro we said they were good or that they would be played, but I don't, we definitely didn't expect them to basically enable a new archetype when you played four of them. Like we, did, I mean, we, we, we just I, I, think, I remember, yeah, I think you and I, Anthony, were like, well, maybe one of 
and that's a lot already. And I think Mengu was actually right. Mengu was like, you know, those are going to be great. Yeah. But also Mengu says everything I'll, is going to be great every time. So that's kind of I, like, I don't think no, I said too true. I don't, I don't think I said very much about it because it was right before the USRC, I think. But yeah, but I, 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 I think I, we were like, well, maybe not great or whatever. I feel yeah, like we, I, I definitely, we definitely underrated it. No, yeah. I mean, sure. we, we, we nailed all the fine. things, you know, but this one, definitely not. Yeah, Mengu says like, not every two color deck we're going to scroll in though. Well, that's not the yeah. case. They do, right? Like, yeah, everyone much does. Better. Especially Rack the... Rack the scam and Yog mod they all play. Yeah, it. yeah. We were we were we were wrong yeah. about that. I, I wanted to we put these in single color no, decks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was... I, I'm just saying, like, I mean we had some very good hits, like we, we nailed the bands or whatever, you know, like some things we called they were very right and very accurate or whatever. Uh she this one we did. Not. That was yeah, I would count this as wrong. I, I agree. <laughs> this is, yeah. I think this time <laughs> Uh, this is the biggest wrong I think we've had in the podcast so far compared really? to what actually happened. No way. Happened. We've, we've so. definitely been more wrong than this. No way, no way, well, no way, no we, way. We should, make, we should make a summary recap of things we've been wrong. Like okay, a, yeah. I'm, I just wrong. feel for sure. We must have said some... I don't know. We, like, what did, what episode did Mango say? It was 70, 72? There's no way we didn't say some heinously stupid stuff. Well, just, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> All right. I, I can see that. Yeah. But we were definitely wrong on this one. And it's time to, you know, uh, admit it publicly. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. I personally was very wrong. I was probably the one that was more down in, about, about these lands. And yeah, that was bad. The sink. <laughs> I was very, very happy to try it in Merc Tide. The, the, def, that, that was definitely a deck. I was very happy to, to try one. And, and now they even play two because they're splashing green now, Merc Tide. And they play even the, the blue green one. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very. It's just so. It's just so nice to fetch it. I even played it in Legacy yesterday. Uh, this weekend, I played Legacy and I played uh, Under City Sewer in my Sultai deck. Um, yep. And I've seen a lot of Under City Sewer in every blue black deck, basically, even Doomsday and. Yeah, this know, this, like this that, tells so. you how wrong I was. I mean, it does make sense, right? Like once you play a game and you see a game, it's like, yeah. well, it's actually like turning all these fetch lands into. A zero mana free scry one. That's a better yeah. scry one. That's actually very good. Like, I just never thought about it like on that exact way. I was just like, well, if you know, it's very bad. Like, kind of Mystic Sanctuary, bad. But then it's like, well, Mystic Sanctuary yeah. is like completely great. So you know, it's banned. <laughs> yeah, it's banned in modern. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> like, if this is a very bad Mystic Sanctuary, sure, you know, <laughs> like, okay, it's even a dual land. So yeah. Yeah. Definitely one of the, I mean, remember, personally speaking, I think it was very, very wrong. Do you remember Javier Alimar Depp? I do. Um, the top plan from uh, Worldway comes into play yeah. and you rearrange a top three card. Yeah. And I remember, yeah, when this card came out, I just couldn't believe it. I'm like, this is too powerful. Like, it's free and you get uh, almost almost like a ponder, you know, when this came out. It was, you know, at the very early stage of my magic career, but I definitely felt... Like, you know, this was breaking the game, but it wasn't. But I guess if it was an island, it would definitely be, so... Yeah, exactly. Well, it would be much better with an island because you could it. just maybe have to fetch us and whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. uh, but that, yeah, the Superlands, uh, I'm looking forward to fetch some of them and, you know, and surveil and think like, well, I thought this was bad, but this is great every time yeah, until <laughs> it gets old. Yeah, so... I feel like what happened with uh, Warriors Vengeance is that, as you said, Yuki Shikawa top the RC in Japan a few weeks ago, I think. And uh, and then this deck... Uh, and then what happened is that Living Gen just, like, went crazy. Like, it was probably the most popular deck before the bans. And this deck just crushes Living Gen. I actually played the league <laughs> with Living Gen post-ban. And uh, this deck just... Now that you don't have Outburst anymore, you can't go, like reanimate at the end of your turn and they just attack and kill you so i played against archon of cruelty and atraxa like two different decks and whenever they put that into the graveyard game one it was over like i couldn't i just couldn't beat it so because you can't like again you don't have the outburst uh, sequence anymore just even if so you I feel did, like this deck just imagine trying yeah, to play living exactly. in against the faithful mending like how do you how do you play the game yeah, yeah that doesn't, doesn't and sound even great. solitude <laughs> and even Solitude breaks Living Gen so much. So, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, no, for sure, this this deck came as a response to to Living Gen being so dominant. And this deck really did dominate. Like, it, it won in China, it won in Thailand, it won the uh, Star City game, it won the face-to-face -face Open. So, uh, it was definitely the weekend of Esper Goyer's Vengeance uh, in Modern. But again, of the previous metagame, now, maybe... 
without Living and being the most popular deck, it will be just, you know, it will have less good matchups. Yeah, it can, still be good, can be, yeah, maybe it's all good, and maybe just just like a fine tier one tier two deck or whatever. That's cool. Like it's an actual yeah. new deck in mod. I haven't seen that for a little while, right? I think it's cool. Yeah, this is uh I mean the, and also like the play pattern of this deck is somewhat fun because like it's an instant speed combo card, so you can like respond to cards like endurance or whatever, uh, by creating a stack. Uh, it definitely create like you can go you can go fair you can art cast a tracks up uh i don't want to say easily but actually it's not that hard like you definitely art cast a tracks if you play a league uh, at least once um so yeah it's it has a lot of um angles this definitely. seems like a deck i will enjoy actually i would like him yeah, yeah, i'm liking yeah, the sound of it yeah i would probably yeah, have no, I... calling this i don't know about fun like, anything with glorious vengeance is probably not terribly enjoy like i mean I'm, i am a combo player what can i say yeah, you might enjoy it, but i mean i i, I mean i'm just what what mango said I, I i don't think this is a deck that has particularly healthy uh play pans because i mean you have this combination of like blinking grief and like trying to reanimate something yeah. and kill your opponent on three functional win the game on turn three like that's not yes <laughs> much much better <laughs> than rhinos <laughs> Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I, pl- I play too like, much cube. Now I just want to play Trax and Grizzlebrand. That's all I want to do. And also, like, so you're playing for a Traxas, but Grizzlebrand is so much better to reanimate because it just is this. I don't know. I guess I haven't played a reanimator in Legacy in a long time. I but I miss reanimating Grizzlebrand, and then just you draw fourteen. You have like infinite free spells between grief, solitude, and force of negation, even. Uh, so you just, yeah, you just, you know, you just do all this stuff and then Wait. you link Grease of Brand with an Ephemerate. They play Commandeer. Commandeer with, like, they don't yeah. play blue cards no. or both, right? Yeah, no, this one, this one was bad. Commandeer was bad. I drew it a couple of times. I was never able to. Like, it seems really hard to anything. actually assemble three blue cards. But and, it gave yeah. me, it gave me a good thumbnail, though. I put a Traxa <laughs> inside the ball with my face on Commandeer. Well, yeah, I can good. see you can Commandeer after the Traxa, but I mean, it's like in normal games, it doesn't seem like better than on other options. I, yeah. I also guess this deck, part of the why this deck is good is the cyborg, though, isn't it? Like, this can have access to a very good cyborg plan that can sidestep. Yeah, these are great. Hate. Yeah, like, the, the, the cyborg cards are very good. Like, all these cyborg cards are actually quite good, locally speaking. Like, you can have the best cards in some situations. I think that's also a good part, a part of a deck like this being appealing, in my opinion. Like you can just you can even play hate cards against other decks if you specifically need them, right? Like against Yagmoth or whatever. And I think that's that, that's good. I mean, obviously this is very prepared against Cascade with the Teferi, Flash Storm, <laughs> Chalice. But if if the new meta game opens in a different way, this Cyber could readapt. I think this like cool. I mean, if it's as functional as it looks, it could have legs even in the new meta game. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there. This weekend there was um, a couple of um, other uh, modern events that I feel like uh, it's good to sh- highlight, or I guess I could say the word showcase. Uh, the modern <laughs> showcase. Um, yeah, this is just all natural, by the way, not planned or anything. Okay, just, um... I believe you. <laughs> well, just because we don't have a script, anyway, so that's that's why it's all natural. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So the Mother Shookies channel was won by none less than Mono Black Coffer. It's Bam. definitely something I going on? did not <laughs> expect. One thing I like to see is there are only two Orkish Bowmaster. This is a card I've been lower and lower in modern. Uh, basically just like quite weak against every non-Merc um, type deck. And its only role was to kill the other opponent Bowmasters. So yeah, definitely a card that you wouldn't expect to go down. To two copies especially you know for how good it was in 2023 but i guess now it's not that good anymore in modern makes sense to me i mean i've been trying uh, to cut these for a little while yeah, i think you're right i don't know like it, it's it's a lot narrower than it seems and every time this card is just too cl- there's too many spots where this card is very close to raise the alarm which is just not even close to a card you want in these decks that it's not too surprising to see this card drop in stock and yeah it's because it's not a card that's good uh, like, I think it is context-sensitive, right? So playing a non-four number is totally reasonable to me. This is this is playing the couple of Profane Tutor, 3 Damnation, 4 Shieldred Edict, 
Uh, Alex Stone of Eric, actually, this is one of the best tools I think you can have against Yogmut. Just kind of like a free a free card that's not card disadvantage, that just in some particular matchup like Yogmut or I guess Rack the Scam, you just leave it in play and it does all the job. Whereas in every other matchup, you can just go three mana cycle, which is, you know, a little bit worse than Radical Progenitus, but here it's much better than Radical Progenitus because you have a lot of removal spells. Unlike in Tron, where, you know, Relic is better than Stone, for sure. Um, Makes sense. I mean, not too much else to say about this list, but I will definitely uh, stream with this um, the um, tomorrow. Uh, Domain Zoo is another deck that has been doing very well. Uh, and actually a deck that I just kind of enjoy playing. The, the, the play pattern is very aggressive. It has very powerful cards. You can assemble the Leland of the Keep but Sign of Draco combo. This deck doesn't have that many ways to use the land of the guild pack. Like you don't have subtlety and force of negation or even solitude or endurance or whatever. So sometimes it feels like you get a, a bad draw, but opening this is much better here because you have so much domain that it just fixes your uh, bad mana based draw. Like for example, if you draw forest temple garden, you have to mulligan. But if you draw forest temple garden and ley line, then you keep. So it gives you more consistency to your bad mana base. I like this deck. Uh, yeah, I th at one point here though, is like as opposed to Rhinos, where Leyland is like in, in a good enabler, and you have a, like a way to get rid of, of the excess, as you say, like with subtlety or whatever. Uh, it looks to me here, without playing a game with this version, that this is probably like for Leyland of the Gold Pack is probably not the actual right number, right? Like you don't you don't have use for multiples. And it's also not, like, it's very good in your deck because it enhances your synergies. But it's also, like, you don't need it as much in that sense. Like, and yeah, like, in, this is an aggressive deck, so, like, drawing two is, like, actually very bad because it doesn't have that, that many ways to actually make up the fact that you do, do two and the such. I, I, I would probably, if I was playing this deck, consider going for three or two. Three, yeah. probably. Like, the I, three, I, four I sounds kind of weird. There's a, there's a subtle anti-synergy where, like, like drawing a dead card has a higher cost in a more synergistic deck, which this is somewhat in that it's aggressive, right? Like aggressive cards are inherently somewhat synergistic. They, I mean, a glib way of putting it is that they synergize with your opponent's life total, but it does. Really yeah, they work. do. It's, they it do. does work that like, way, right? Nishoba so, is synergy yeah. card. Right? Otherwise, <laughs> it will not be playable in modern, right? So, exactly. So same yeah, yeah. I, th I think this. I, th I think this card actually does look quite a bit worse here than in the Rhinos deck and. Honestly, like I, I'm not even sure the Rhinos deck was like I'm. It's still not clear to me whether the uh, Leyline version is better than the um, regular version of Rhinos pre-ban. Um, obviously, that changes post-ban because of Violent Outburst being banned. But like here, yeah, I agree. It's just not necessarily a four of. And I know we're gonna open a whole can of worms with people talking about whether Leylines are necessarily four ofs or not. Uh, that's that's outside the scope of what we're gonna do now. I know if we start now that Javier and Mango will be at each other's throats. No, but... well, we, we're gonna. Ha it's gonna be fast discussion. You can play any number of Leylands. That's well, it. Well, we know that's the answer, but it's not a fast discussion because a lot of people think that you're supposed to play zero or four Leylands. You know that's true. No, be you, not you know because people like the, no because they listen to the podcast, and if they don't listen uh, to the podcast, they're not listening to this, right? So wanna, if they're listening to this, they know this. Do you want to quickly talk about why that is, like very very quickly, or? Well, is, you can have it. Spiral? There's no rule. That's it. Yeah. I mean, we're, I'm pretty sure we have said it before. Okay. Like, th there's no reason to do the way around. That's it. Mm, okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. You continue. Continue. Okay, uh, <laughs> a change I would make to this deck, for sure, is to play four pick the poison in your sideboard. Like, yeah. that Four. That's just the best. So, it is like, yeah, like just the because best. it's good against Amulet, right? Also, like, it's good against, yeah. Like, like... Yeah. Like, there's no reason to play Wear Tear over Pick Your Poison. Okay, no, that's a bit strong. And it's just so much... Hold on. Yeah, it's so much better. I mean, clearly there is a reason to play... I mean, I don't think it's necessarily correct, but I don't want to be... What about against Hamulet? Like, against Hamulet, Titan, Mengu, do you think Pick the Poison is actually better than Wear Tear? Because against that deck specifically is where Wear Tear is like, boom. You know? Yeah, I guess. I guess, yeah. Like, if that is but true, like... that's a reason to play Wear Tear. Or, like, against Scales or something. Yeah, but... I don't know. Like, it's, 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 like... it can't be that there's no reason, like... <laughs> no, no. Okay, so I exaggerated, of course, but like also. the ability to the ability to like sideboard this card in against, you know, Zoo or Merc Tide and be able to kill Blood Moon or Shredder. Um, I don't know, Lilian Binding but, or Sino Draco. 
But you do know? you want to play four against mirror match? Yeah, that's no, a thing. No, you don't, right? You like two or three. Maybe two only. But not. And the, the mirror match does 12 targets. You have Cyan. But it doesn't Lillian matter Lillian. if it has targets. Ooh. It matters whether it's good. Like, I, I don't want to... Like, just because I can cast it doesn't mean it's that it's good, you know? <laughs> like, like, what if you... Like, like, uh, exchange is very... I don't know. Like, what, what if you, up, like, you draw two of these cards in the mirror match? I think that's very... Uh, it's a big liability. I, would, I, would, I, would, I don't know. Today I cited in four and it was good. But I understand. <laughs> well, I mean. well uh, yeah. I'm not saying every time you... Do Cyborg 4, it's going to feel bad. I'm saying, like, it yeah, might yeah, be Yeah, yeah, no, I understand what you mean. Yeah. Like, so the, the way I see it is, like, if you're going to have some amount of effects, Pick of Punch is going to be better. But against the very dedicated enchantment plus artifact that is, like, Hammer and Amulet, probably, specifically, the wear tear seems better. So I think it's... Like, it's also, like, you don't want to play a, a bunch of answers in this deck. Like, you're playing a mirror match, I assume you want to cut the four Stubborn Denials and play four cards, right? Yeah, that's that's what I did. I like, exactly what I don't know switch. what's a better way to do it, but I'm, what I'm saying is like, you want exactly four cards in. So if you construct a cyborg, yeah, you will want to have yeah, four yeah. in. So you have to like, like I think this. I think Peter Poison is a card you can custom, like you can customize your cyborg around, just to make sure things fit well. Which I am not intuitively seeing this is happening here, but this card could be. It's we can. I kind of call those like cyborg stabilizers where. They can just, it's like, you know, you know, these weights in the markets where they use the old markets where they can just put weights in things. I think this card, I don't know if this comparison is getting anywhere, but it's you, just you a, can it's just the best of brain, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so it just, it just can just, you can use those cards to actually make all the weights be as balanced as you want. And that's also why it's probably not a four off in a perfect configuration because that will probably lead into some severe, like, disbalances in terms of the weight of the cyborg in, in and out, where a card like Venom Terror is, like, a 10, but this card is going to be consistently an 8 or whatever. And I think that's, yeah, that, I, I, I'm just saying, like, it's probably not correct to play four of this. Yeah, we historically just don't play many copies of the Abrade-type cards because they usually imply that we have too many um, narrow cards that we have to put something like low impact and narrow, which means that we have too many low impact cards in general. Like, I get that Pick Your Poison is good, but ultimately it does do one specific thing in your sideboard, which is trade with a card, and that can only be so impactful, especially in modern, I think. Like, that kind of, that kind of card is usually kind of great in standard, where you just need to make sure your answers work, and the opportunity cost is not as high. But I do think in modern, you have scope for more powerful effects than just trading cards. Um, so yeah, yeah, I would also be surprised if 4 was ever correct, I think. It was yeah. the best of rate. <laughs> The best of braid, but still in a braid. Okay, best of and, and uh, one more event that uh, uh, happened of uh, a lot of people were this weekend at the modern main event in Bologna at four season. Four hundred fifty one players. That meant uh, ten rounds of Swiss, with uh, you know the classic Italian top eight split. So uh, the top eight is based on uh, top eight is based on Swiss, but I believe actually the first place went nine and one, which is. <laughs> I couldn't ID in the eighth ones. It's definitely a brutal uh, situation to be in. But anyway, um, Hardened Skills. This is a deck that uh, we just don't see very often. And uh, it's always a interesting deck to to see at the top tables. Uh, we see uh, Amulet Titan, which I want to open a parenthesis. I played on Friday Amulet Titan for the... I guess I played Amulet Titan in the FNM, and then the next day I played it at the... The next week I played it at this uh, four season event and I got I got crushed. Like, I don't know. I was confident. I thought I knew what to do, but I found myself against Blue Red Merc Tide, struggling to time my spells, and I just lost to the various uh force of negation, subtlety, counter spells. I just got like completely destroyed by counter spells and Yeah, I get I did very poorly with Amulet Titan, so I will uh go back to be a <laughs> I'll be the one that's casting Pick the Poison and Blood Moon hey, against Simon the Titan instead of... It's because you did badly with the deck once. Trying. Doesn't mean you have to drop it. Like It's not that I did badly once. I just felt like there's uh, an entry barrier that requires you too much time that I just don't have to, okay. play, to play this deck. Like I thought I would have been fine, but I feel like if you play this deck you know, not very well, it's just not, not that good. Yeah, okay. it has to be good enough you know, for this to be worth it. Yeah. Like... And this might not be the case. 
Yeah, I like this this list. The, the list that came second is the one from uh, the latest one from House of Mana with four Explorer and the three three Summoners Pact. Also, he doesn't have the the land that copies the amulet, but has instead Castle Garenbrig, um, which is again something that uh, Jack uh, House of Mana has has been doing. Um, so it's uh, interesting to see that by Jacopo Lardori. And then we continue, we see Creativity, which is another deck that people have brought up as in, oh, it's coming back, Creativity is coming back. You know, Creativity used to be bad against Cascade strategy, so, you know, um, people are now excited to try this deck again. I am still a doubter of anything that revolves around Ren and Six, but, uh, you know, it's there. It even top four the showcase, so it definitely had some, some results this past weekend. Well, to be fair, uh, Creativity is the best Ren and Six deck. Like, it's Run six gets better once you have fables and Dwarven Mine. So, <laughs> like creativity being good doesn't mean Run six is still great in the format. And uh, in particular, now with Run and six, I guess you can get the surveillance. So, oh, you can nice. get at least something on top of. Like, this is something that I wrote in the article. It was uh, it's gonna make Run and six better. Uh, it? I don't think it still did, but yeah, it helped. It helped for sure. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. I don't know, like, how do they get in your grid? Like, it doesn't seem like no. It can be that big. No, Anthony. The thing is, with round six, often you, all you care about is not drawing more lands, right? right. And you have excess yeah. lands. You just flood. So you actually you just flood yeah, every time. So you actually will flood less if you have those. I didn't think about this one, but it does make an impact for sure. Okay. Oh, I see. Right, right. Check yeah. this out. Okay. I remember once me and Javier had a discussion about the number of Dwarven Mines and Creativity a long time ago, and I'm glad to see that Emanuele has three Dwarven Mines. Do, yes. do you remember why I wanted four, Mengu? <laughs> For the mirror match. Yeah, how many mirror matches are in this topic, though? <laughs> or in the I, know, I know that's a good point <laughs> I wanted to root for uh, I know I, I know but the... I had to throw the ball back to you was yeah duty. this was when was this is when you came to Four Seasons last time I think it was when two was Four it? Seasons ago yeah so probably well, like, like four, four, I think it was summer Seventer, uh, maybe, it was maybe last summer yeah I think it was last summer with, with all, three, all three it was in June yeah I think it was, it was hot June, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I look forward <laughs> to what a way to remember and then we have a well it was very hot right yeah that's why yeah, remember because I went from Four Seasons to Barcelona. That was probably one of my longest streak of having dinner at the restaurant. <laughs> Good restaurant, so I went. Yeah, I went from like you know four days in Bologna into Barcelona every night, and then Athens every night. So it was two weeks in a row, <laughs> but I, I survived somehow. Then we have uh, a couple of living ends, which of course uh, doesn't. Um, you know, kind of legal anymore. anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Notably, no, no rhinos in the top eight. Uh, I'm sure there were plenty uh, down. And then there's the blue white uh, Narset deck, the Narset Days and Doing, which always, uh, always does well at the at the first season event. It's playing two blue white survey lands. Uh, the control decks definitely are happy to play the the survey lands. I remember when I built my blue white uh, mana base i had the black white survey land and the, the catcher trium so you can go black white survey land catcher trium little and binding but i guess you can uh work a little bit on the on those numbers it's also like in uh, every also, in every top eight there's one blue white control or one mono green tron in modern it's kind of <laughs> at the base of the format <laughs> evergreen it, 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 it hap- <laughs> yeah it's evergreen there's always like one of these control decks you're like how does this even win or a tron deck like it's just like <laughs> How it goes and it's playing with three pick your poison wow no chalice of the void <laughs> sometimes uh, you see the the main deck chalice of the void which i i'm kind of a hater i don't like the uh, people be like oh there's a lot of retro, uh, cascade you play main deck chalice easy win but the reality is that chalice is it's just not a not a great card against so many decks that i'm not a fan of it i mean pick of poison here yeah. is a testament of how good it is like it's it's three pick of poison and in a blue white deck like that is how good these players think it is and it probably is honestly just seeing how how bro the car is well like this is a deck where like trading well i said trading one for one isn't generally something that you care that much about in modern at least not to that extent but 
for specifically a control deck it makes i mean that is what you're trying to do right so no i know i know yeah, but it's a splash sense, card yeah. like like it's it's <laughs> you're splashing it like you're playing blue white so it's yeah. kind of annoying sometimes it's always... seems does seem does seem good there yeah, yeah. In seventh place, we have a four of of a card oh. that uh, probably I've never seen in my life as a four of. Four Eagles of the North. Yeah. The infamous white cycling land got there I love by this deck Mario B so much. Bisogno, who, again, top eight for a season, going 8-1-1. Uh, one, one. It's a really, really good record with uh, mono white martyrs, uh, three martyr of the sands, four the one ring. Just a mono white control deck with two Emeria the Sky Ruin. So you said there's a Tron in every deck, I guess, in every top eight. I guess this is something something like Tron, right? So it's... Well, I like this more than I like Tron. Oh uh, 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 yeah, this is the deck I lost to in the RC. This is this is the loss that I took in the RC. Oh, I love this deck. The mono white. My player okay, is okay, mono I, I don't want to play Goddess anymore. I want to play this. <laughs> yeah. Did you lose to Did you lose to Martyr? Yeah, so, so, so my RC my RC actually went one one then dropped basically because I got. I was re I'm already qualified for everything, so I was like, as soon as I get paired to a friend, if I already have a loss, I'm just gonna concede and drop. But in turn out that happened in round three. So basically, I went one one, and my loss to my loss was to someone playing mono white marcher. So yeah, I actually did. I actually did lose to this. I was playing as rhinos, and the matchup just seems like totally unwinnable. Which <laughs> that that was their experience as well. Like how? <laughs> I mean, I only have four crashing footfalls in my deck. How am I gonna beat someone with a bunch of sweepers and marchers and lockdowns? And it was it was very hard to win. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I looked at the deck list, I'm like, yeah, oh, I mean, I'm done. I'm cooked. This deck is great. Yeah, it was sweet. It's it funny as well, because they activated Marcha, and then they showed me six cards. I'm like, well, not only do they gain 18 life, I can now see their hand, which is totally yeah. unbeatable. <laughs> so I was just conceded on turn two. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Classic cool. Martyr. Uh, yeah. Also, by the way, by the way pick, the pick your poison once again in the sideboard. Oh, hello. Oh, wow. To pick your poison. <laughs> that, that's... that's... Oh. By by the way, if you if you haven't seen Eagles of the North, I mean, you haven't been respecting uh, Tristan's decks. Tristan, I do, Tristan, I do, I do. Yeah. No, I I, mean, I tried this card in Beanstalk Cascade deck. Okay, or <laughs> just check oh, it. I did too. I did too. I uh, I definitely played two in my life, but never four. That's why I felt oh, like boy. because you never played yeah. Martyr. That's why. Big mistake. Uh, All right, this is Mario Bisogno. Congratulations, Mario, Ma for my a personal Martyr of Sands. Yeah, no, fan. I'm sh I'm sure he beat a lot of. Ryan throughout sense. the, the and tournament. And also a lot of other things. You know, this is the topic yeah. of the 450 players. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I know, I know. And then finally, uh, Yogmoth. Uh, yeah, again, yeah. One, of, yeah, one of the best decks in the format. Two underground mortuary. That's the Black Green Survey Land. Sure. And of course, a, pick, a, a single pick your poison in the sideboard. No more. Yeah, than because, that. because. Probably. Yeah. Because, because every is every there... deck has to play. How many pick your poisons are in the top eight? Like... Yeah, I was just checking that. I was just checking that. So obviously, Living End can't play it. Right, and the non -living uh... end, on the non-living end decks, it's like a lot of copies no. anyway, right? No, yeah. But I feel like Creativity could have easily played it. Yeah, I mean... It, it chose not. So... I think it's kind of funny because you see this card and it doesn't... It looks like... I mean, obviously, it's like the best or whatever, but like it doesn't look like it. The first time you look at it, it's like, oh, there's going to be a good separate card in draft. That's it, right? That, that's the first thought. I get with this with this car like the the canopy really whatever. yeah I mean the first time I saw it was like yeah I know it's good but like I didn't think about it that much you know I understand like there's there's cars like yeah. these that were yeah. played and way worse but like and now now it's suddenly it's like being a splash team blue white and mono white and any kind of thing <laughs> That's fair. even it's um, Merc died like Merc that plays a main yeah deck. like more that you play pick the, what you know it's, it's like, a new new make disappear where you're like oh that looks good but then you don't realize like it means good good multi-format good well i know this appears yeah. a multi-format superstar but this is like <laughs> this is something else this, yeah <laughs> this is one of the most played cars in modern right now you know like that's not make disappear unfortunately for make disappear oh <laughs> i love make disappear. Yeah, it, it has to be Paco one of the most Flaco. it has to be one of the most non-land played cards like for real yeah. and that's yeah. that's impressive well, it's know? just very broad to be fair i want to i do want uh, to specify that it's because it's broad and not because it's so so is this powerful, like good yeah. design for you or bad design anthony I think it's good design. I'm, I, I, I don't know. I think modern needs more cards like this. Like, to be fair, I also think like pitch elementals are good for modern. So, I mean, I'm obviously fine if I think a good answer is played in lots of different decks. I well, but kind of point is like it makes like it's all the same answer for all the decks. Okay, so but the alternative like is that they just don't play an answer. Like that, which is the same thing for the uh, for the free answers in modern. Like if if they don't play those, they just don't play answers and they're just goldfish instead. So, okay, yeah, I think yeah, I think this is way better than the alternative. For sure. Do you agree, Mango? Do you feel like the same or? 
Like you like the yeah, the... I know. I like the I like pick up poison. Yeah. Did you say the were were you talking about the pick your poison impacting modern? Well, I was talking about if you like the design, if you like the, the fact design. that it's now played yeah. in every deck. Like not not whether it's good or yeah. the quality no, of the cards. I was literally just talking about the card as a design. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, it's. I don't know. I mean, I'm happy that you print cards that get through modern. So the more cards you go to modern. No, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's cool, but so, also like these kind of cards uh, actually have a bottleneck type of situation where this card means less cards will get in, particularly compared to you know, because it's not really about power level, as Anthony said. It's more like about the level of flexibility of answers. Mm-hmm. I mean, the more answer, the better the format is. I remember when MH2 came out, it was wonderful because it had so many very good and cheap answers, right? Uh, that's what that's what we love to do. If we love to have more interactive decks when the top decks are uh, Espergorio and Living End or I'm the Titan, we don't really love that. So I'm a big fan of uh, Pick Your Poison and uh, cheap answers for sure. Uh, yeah, so the, um, you know, what else, uh, what else to say? Do you guys have anything to share of uh, your, uh, your, your weekend, Anthony? What was your uh, preparation? You, you, you landed on uh, uh, Rhinos, of course. Did you consider any question. other deck? What do you mean, of course? I mean, my entire preparation was I landed back. I spent some extra time in the, the United States after oh, the PT. I returned, and then I was like, when's yeah, my no, next flight? I was like, oh, it's in three days. Oh, my God. So I asked Nathan Steuer, yeah. what do you think's good? And he said, "Domain rhinos. I think that's best." I was like, "All right, they'll they'll do." So that was that was that was the, that was the extent of my preparation. Um, uh, I, I have it. a question, oh, Anthony. Oh. It's an important question for me. Yeah. So in the Sydney, Perth, Melbourne scale, what where does Melbourne land and why? Uh, it's the best by a lot. Like, it's not particularly close. Like, so Perth is just. Well, there's not that much going on here, but it's kind of comfy and nice. Like, it's a really good place to retire, but it's very far from everywhere, so that's a point against it. And Sydney's just kind of unplayable. Like, it's basically... Like, Sydney's kind of... Hmm, what's, a, what's a good analogy? It's kind of like Merktide. Like, there's a lot of people <laughs> on it, but it doesn't really make any sense, and it's very expensive, and there's not really any upside. So, I think... Uh, I'm just very down on Sydney. Like, it's just no, I know that. expensive yeah, and yeah, ugly I, and bad. I, I, so Melbourne um, is good. Okay. Uh, Melbourne, 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 Melbourne is the most European of the cities by by a lot. Like it's uh got a great public transport system. It's got like some arts and culture to it. I went to a nice concert when I when I was there, which is something that's a lot easier to do in Melbourne. Um there's just lots of nice cafes. I don't know. If anybody visits Australia, I definitely recommend Melbourne. Uh I guess you kinda have to go to Sydney because I right. don't know, there's tourist stuff there. But Mel- Melbourne is the best sponsored. city by a lot. Like if this if this if this RC was in Sydney like I would not, I would just not have gone. Like I, I was fine going to this RC because it was in Melbourne, even though I wasn't going to play for anything. But obviously, I didn't care that much with the RC if I went one one and then conceded to a friend and dropped. Like I was not very invested, but I was still happy to go because I love to visit Melbourne. So that's 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 how highly I think of Melbourne. You know, like it's it's a really great city. So there you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, yeah, I was just. Uh, I was what were you saying? Oh, you asked me about rhinos. That's it. Yeah, I got I got a bit sidetracked by. By Javier there. Um, no, actually, I wanted to ask you. I was just yeah. thinking about something right now. Yeah. So, Crashing Food Falls has been around since 2019. Nobody has ever put the the cards Violent Outburst and Ardently with Crashing Food Falls. Uh, now, sure. do you think it was a mistake, or do you think like the four, just four the two, two rhino, additional? No, no, four colors rhinos. You're indeed right. No, no, I'm saying before Charlotte's Agent was printed, uh. nobody. Uh, played the cards and you even had force negation and you had you know I guess you didn't have subtlety which maybe eased the, the, the glue of everything but or I guess Lauren revealed I mean you certainly have a lot of new cards printed but I'm just thinking you know now everybody's just so happy to put Art and Plea in their deck but you know you you had this four color deck are, are, are available you, are you asking me about before Shadow's Agent and Subtlety existed like whether it was correct to build Rhinos a certain way I mean I don't know. I mean, I, I. Why didn't you ask me like how the Bill Clinton election went? I, I, I don't know. That's it's ancient history. I can't. I can't give you a real answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, I'm. I'm how am I supposed to answer that? 
I mean, Modern, oh. like, so you're saying, like, between the time of Modern Essence 1 and Modern Essence 2, right? Uh, I actually feel like that might be right. And maybe there, like, there was a deck there to be found and we didn't find it. Where Footfalls had, had enough because Force Negation was there and the whole shell was kind of there. And presumably the power level was somewhat lower. I don't exactly recall was was the best decks in Modern Horizons one. I think it was the I mean obviously Hogak, but after Hogak, uh, yeah, you had like Arkham's Astrolabe, Uro. Yeah, yes, there was also Oko in the mix. I mean those cards are like much a, better than Rhinos, right? So, yeah. Ursa, what about just before Mox Opal? Yeah, it, maybe just yeah. before MH two after they banned Oko, Mox Opal, whatever. There was like a small yeah, window, maybe. but it was a small window. There was no, no PT whatsoever. No, it sounds horrible. Yeah. It was it was prowess Heliod, prowess and Heliod, and a little bit of Death Shadow. And that like, that might might be a fine situation for Rhinos, but also maybe. it would be worse. It sounds kind of sus. Yeah. <laughs> I think there would be a chance for the deck to be at least like a tier two playable deck, but nothing like a score. Like the power level was, I was not say lower, but it was higher because of the broken cards. And you know, if they, they play an Oko and, and you play Rhinos, they're not going to win the game probably. So. I'm more it, willing so, to entertain that it might have been something we should have tried earlier. Like, you know, like more recently, maybe we should have been playing Ardently. I don't know. Maybe. Probably not. Well, yeah, there's a, ch- there's a chance it's believable. was better. Yeah, like there's yeah. a chance, not to the chance Ardently was better than Violent Outburst all around. But I also, I don't know, I never liked Living End being in the metagame much. So I'm not going to be, I'm not going to miss that deck. I can tell you that. Yeah, it's just a miserable deck. Yeah, right? definitely. Yeah, I <laughs> don't like. I don't like deck, it because yeah. all the uh, no, but it just it just like all the games were exactly the same ish from the other side. So I mean, I tend to pl- I did tend to play decks that were good against Living End, but it doesn't mean I particularly enjoyed. It. Like it was consistently my least favorite matchup to play across the match the board, even though yeah, like most decks I played were good against it, but it's still some others were bad and they were when they were bad against Living End, it felt like you just couldn't play as long as they hit the Thorland or whatever. So yeah, for me, not having a yeah. in the format is like, is like a good thing. I don't mind Rhinos. I don't think it's great to have them because you know it's also kind of the same, but not as to the same extent. Like, there's some combat and there's some some very variations, a bit important variations that yeah, are not can, there with the end. Yeah, you can play like Anoli Heat, you kill a Rhino, and then you know you live. But yeah, yeah, it's, the, end, it's, it's a different three thing. Mana, three mana, show and tell omniscience, you know, by itself. No, 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 for sure, for sure. Um, so. As I said earlier, not this weekend, but the one after, I have a large modern tournament I, I have to prepare. Um, you guys know my deck building decisions often imply that if I did poorly with a deck recently, I'm not going to play it. Recently. So I'm ruling out... <laughs> I'm ruling out Merktide. I'm ruling out Mono Black Coffers. Amulet. Amulet. I mean, Amulet is just the... Mango. Like I think it's pretty clear. I, I think it's pretty clear. You should play uh, Domain Su with three or less Leyland of the Guild Pact. F- what about, yeah. What about Tron? What about Tron? No. Why would you like, play Tron? No. No, Why because I Tron? think it's like Tron but, makes sense for like defined meta game. Like we play Tron yeah. when we have something to target, and right after a ban, when things are in flux, like <laughs> when things are harder to predict, it's not the time for Tron. Like Tron is it's good for opposite. stable meta games. Today, I wish I played Tron at the RC because we actually kind of knew yeah. what to expect. Yeah, you could have played Tron. Yeah, it could been good. I should have. No, hundred percent, I should have. Right. I think absolutely. I just got trapped by Nate. You know, that's yeah. That's, we that blame, okay, we officially blame Nate. On yeah, of this. course. I yeah. blame a lot of things right. on him. Yeah. We- when I saw Martos <laughs> top hating the RC in Ghent, while I was just scrubbing out with every deck I was playing, all I thought was, why didn't I test it? Why didn't I test Tron? Prejudice. It's just, you need to conquer your prejudice, Mangu. It's twenty twenty four. No, 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 man. I no. I play Tron. I play Tron. I I won my my first RCQ with Tron. And why didn't you test it? So, yeah, why didn't you play it? I, I mean, I, I, Tron is why I would I, have played another RC. I was asking, actually, I, I'm telling you I, why. I was asking my. <laughs> I was I was asking myself that. So uh, that's that's something that I regret. And uh, today again, I was playing a league on Magic Online uh, on stream with Tron. Matos was in the chat. We were just so happy, you know. The deck was drawing so well, and yeah. Okay, was, but don't play. Um, don't actually play it though. <laughs> Not at this no, event. No, I'm sorry. Maybe if it was good, we would tell okay, you. Okay, so I'm cons- I'm considering Tron, I'm considering Domain Zoo, and I'm considering Espagorio. Uh, those are the is the three decks. You think Espagorio is the kind of deck you can play right after it does well? I feel like that's not how modern works. I don't yeah, know. I think Tron is not looking good. 
it's, it looks extremely bad against the goddess if you don't play Bradley or whatever. And yeah, I mean, it looks good for the main two. I don't know. So, what about Gorya, you think it did well? Yes, but together with this deck doing well, you have Living End, quote unquote, dying. So people may just cut their graveyard hate. And then you lose like one of your great matchups that you was, you said this deck was a good response to Living End. That's and true. It doesn't exist. So it... That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's for sure true. Um, also, great. I don't know. I, I just. Yeah, I, f- I feel like it's not that. Yeah, I don't know. In modern, if a new deck appears, I'm usually very cautious of. Uh, joining it because I, I I've just seen that play out way too many times in a way that isn't very good for the people adopting the new deck. So I I feel like it's not the glorious. I mean, you should test it if you have time. Obviously, there's always a question of resources. Um, but yeah, for uh, sure. I, yeah, I'm not really feeling. I'm not really feeling Tron. Which out of your choices would leave Domain Zoo, but I think maybe you should play Rhinos. I think that's what I would play. No. What do you mean? No. I hate. What? I hate that deck. I always what? hate that deck. Yeah, don't oh, play that. Oh wow. You hate. Okay. That, that, that's you... my that's my that's my teaching for today. If you hate the deck, don't play it. It doesn't go. Yeah, you have to no, learn no. to not hate it first. And once you do Every it, time then play... you can play it. Every time I play a league with Rhinos, I'm so sad. Oh, <laughs> like, well, then you should not play the deck. How is that a reason? <laughs> I don't want to say Anthony that. Does, yeah. Anthony does not have a soul for these things. I can, I can understand you, Mango. Don't play <laughs> Rhinos. <laughs> uh, Tron, on the contrary, Tron is a happy deck. Yes, this when is you unreal. Top deck, when you top deck, when you top deck the Tron missing piece, it gives you a type of happiness that nobody, no, no other deck gives you. Like it doesn't exist. That's no way. This, this is not. <laughs> this, this, this is. Not this is competitive magic desolation at its finest, Anthony. Lee. I don't know what you're saying here. Uh, I want to throw up. That's that's how the actual professionals choose their decks. You guys remember? Do you guys remember Saito? He was he was saying this a lot. Happy deck, happy, happy deck. Yes. He, he if, was a very big the, fan of happy deck. If the deck is not happy, I, you should not play Mango because you're. I, I'm, I'm not even kidding now. Game. Like, I think oh, no, I know. when you play a deck that you just don't do not enjoy, you're often gonna be making like worse decisions in average. Like, not only because you're gonna be you know maybe mulliganing worse or whatever, but also you will not put the effort as much as you would otherwise in learning the deck on the small things because you're like, you know, just clicking through or whatever the games instead of like being focused on actually getting better with the deck and every, and every single opportunity. So yeah, certainly for all the listeners, do not recommend tying it with a deck that you don't like for the tournament. Sometimes it's right. I mean, I think that's often true, but that's not always true. But it also depends on why you don't like the deck, surely. Like, I don't really get why Mango would dislike Rhinos so much more than... Zoo, like what's? I mean, maybe he doesn't like rhinos. You know, maybe he's scared of rhinos. Uh, okay. Just has a problem. What about with that reason? Yeah. The ungulates. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that would be a fair reason, you know. If you're scared of rhinos, you should not play the deck. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's difficult for me to argue with that. I suppose. No, because I have run into the situation where I did. Like, let's say I, when, I ever. Conclude... whenever. Yeah, no, like it, it could happen. Like, I mean, I did not like Tron for some time, and all the decks uh, in the standard formats, particularly, I have disliked a lot. Like the Marvel deck, you, I did not like it, right? So you, you, you top aided a pro two with Tron. <laughs> I know, so but in the past, that, that's, you, that's the day, a story. That's a yeah, that's that's a story of you overcoming your prejudice no, against a deck and exactly. then succeedingly massively. So I'm how is the lesson like about, to not do I, that? Let me finish. I'm talking okay. about like 2015 or so. What I would be like, well, you know, Tron being in the format sucks or whatever. Uh, I I would get frustrated playing Tron and also against Tron because I did not like the deck and also did not like the presence of the deck in the format. So what I did was just like try to embrace Tron, like try to like Tron, which is a different thing of trying to be good with Tron. I just tried to be like, all right, let's play Tron and see how I can enjoy this deck or whatever. And and that's and eventually worked. Like I just played enough magical land or whatever until I eventually had fun playing Tron, and that's where I became good with Tron, which was useful. You know, flash forward but, to the last PT last summer. But like that that's the process I went through. I was not like, well, I'm gonna play Tron in tournaments. No, I first tr- learned to enjoy Tron, and then I I learned Tron. But that, that that's the, that's my whole point. Like, why don't you tell people to learn to like it and then play? Like, it's not like Mango has to play the tournament tomorrow. Well, I'm telling to them, like, tomorrow. that's exactly what I'm telling them. Yeah, Mingo, if you okay. want to play Rhinos, you should learn to love the Rhinos first. Yeah, don't, don't tell him <laughs> to not play it. Tell him to learn to like it the way that you like it. I mean, if you, if you right, hated the deck right. and then you ended up top-adding a PT with it, you can tell people how to get from point A to point B instead of telling them 
to give up <laughs> somewhere in between. What is that? Come on. I mean, I, I, there was not the whole speech. I, I needed some time to develop. Yeah. Now I have done. So okay. Oh, good. That, that would be the lesson of the day for, for my experience. I was just so outraged. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Javier, hmm. I have a question to you. Okay. As a as a Tron lover, All right. speaking of love. <laughs> love wow. Tron, yes. Um, Thank you. Do you want to play P- Pick Your Poison in the Tron cyborg? Probably, yeah. I, I think that card is most certainly good enough in Tron because it does help. Like, naturally, the wear and tear matchups are the matchups where Tron is worse, right? So, for once, like, Pick of Potion is actually, like, the best card you can probably play in this deck for those decks. And also, it's, like, broad enough. Like, here, Saboting it in against Mortite, for example, does make a change, like, a big change. So, I think it's... Uh, yeah. Relevance, like finally, we have a good cyber card in Tron. That's not, uh, I mean, you still have a you, right? So, but other than that, th- there's finally a good cyber card in Tron, uh, that you can play it here. So, I yeah, think so it's an improvement. Yeah. From, your, from your list, I cut the Cursed Totem and a second he were might for to pick your poison. Yeah, well, uh, you should not be cutting a uh, second he were might, and it's a little bit long, but you should probably just do not do that. Just read Mavia's article, yeah, yeah but. The, yeah, the, exactly. the, the totem kind of sucks it. anyway, but yeah, I wasn't citing in. I wasn't citing in the over my. But that's also really something you should not do. Like okay, so you cited in. Yeah, you should. You have to. You yeah. need to have one in your deck and one in your sideboard. That's like the bare minimum okay, for okay. the deck's functionality. I understand. And if you have more questions, uh, you can check my Harry article on Tron because I yeah, really yeah, no, say I, all of I, this I, in that article. I think. Yeah. I know, I know, I read it, I read but, it. But specifically the roll the... compression thing does matter a lot for Tron. But that's that's like an unusual case, but because you have Khan, like being able to compress your slots like this actually does matter a lot. So that's actually different to what we'd said about pick your poison before, but it makes a lot of sense that it's very good in Tron. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but it's like, an, yeah. Upgra- like an upgrade. Like if Tron has yeah. a three cyber card, like three, three card yeah. slots, you know, like now having a super yeah, upgrade, that's one now, awesome. now very good. Yeah, like the cyber can only be just pick your poisons. That's it. And that's fine. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah, yeah. It's it's today yeah, big improvement. I will say actually from like natural claim yeah. or Borsage or whatever you want to think and to, you want to play in that slot. Today, yeah, I was able to destroy a Alpine Moon with Pick Your Poison in Intron using the Green Mana from Alpine Moon. That well, was, that's well, that's really... that's great. You can also destroy Blood Moons, Morta. It's like there's a lot of things you can do with this card, yeah. and it even it's even like good with the Chromatic Stars and the Seers. Like, yeah, I I never thought of it in Tron, but it's definitely. I mean, it's probably very good in Omnath or whatever, but it's probably better in Tron, in my opinion, now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, it seems very clear to me. It's kind of yeah. funny, isn't this, it's this card called Pick Your Poison, where you just always pick this card. You're not really picking, are you? It's just, just always yeah, this Yeah, <laughs> no choices are made. Just play Pick Your Poison. Yeah. There sure you go. Gonna place it. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys have anything else to share, or are we good to wrap up? I think we're good. To, we should thank you, the new... Um, Yes, I was going to do that. Of the, of thank the week. you. Yeah, Mango does it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Leo and Igor, for joining the uh, Patreon. Of course, you are joining the Discord, sharing your uh, you know, questions and results with us of Thriver format. That's very nice. The, the, the whole Discord is always a nice place for me to read. So uh, There's really one thing I wanted to with. say, actually, uh, because I got this, okay. well, this question this week from the, in, the, in the Discord of the podcast. Cameron Leaf asked about like um, the Phoenix Mirror Match. Uh, I talked a, little, a bit about this in the My Haria Guide, and I wanted to say like we actually, I like I like this kind of questions because sometimes make me think about things I have not thought before. Uh, the question was like you know like are, are there like things for the new Mirror Matches now people play Ashok, and so if anyone else has this stuff, so there's nothing like that. I have not made more content, but like the most important part of about the Ashex in the middle match is like you should practice a little bit with that matchup specifically in mind, with Ashex in mind, because there's no guidelines. So don't try to always play the card the same way. Just like try to you know deviate from every situation. Like try to deduce how to play every situation because all the practice can get you there. There's not like you know you should slow roll the Ashex or whatever. It doesn't work like that. I just wanted to mention that question. I thought it was a it's good, good yeah yeah i would say that's not guidelines but in the i would maybe frame it as saying you should really consider sometimes it's the best card on turn three and sometimes it's the best card on turn 12 so you know um yeah. re- like be really really open to how you play this card um yeah yeah like that yeah that even means not playing in turn three even if you can you know like, yeah. like you have to just try to craft the different game and every game is going to be different in phoenix mirrors so that's uh something like just practice like if you play 10 matches or whatever against a friend with those decks, you should be able to get some familiarity, but like 
there's no guideline. Even if I wanted yeah. to, there's nothing I can tell you that, you know, I want to play Ashok like that because that's not the, how it works. <laughs> oh, you could, but it would take a very, very, very long time. A lot of effort. Well, it'll still yeah. not be accurate, I guess, you know. I still, like, will find slots where, like, spots where, no, I'm not going to play Ashok here because blah, blah, blah. And that will be very hard to cover. I think that's so, yeah. it for me, Mango. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, again, you can go and check out Javier's article and find it on his Twitter or on Arroya. I think it's a good one, yeah. It's a good article. Great place to start your pioneer RCQ season since they didn't ban Phoenix, so Phoenix is legal, and uh, you should probably, I don't know, consider it since it's definitely one of the best decks in the format. Um, Sure, consider it. So, Mm -hmm. I think... Nice card, consider it, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, very strong. Very strong, very strong card. Also, Javier, I saw that you side out Artlight Phoenix. I was checking out the guide and I was like, setting out one Artlight Phoenix. Yeah, in a bunch of matches, you set out one Artlight Phoenix. That's so strange to Bro, me. Bro, you don't well, know how hard you don't know how hard we had to fight Javier to make him take out Phoenixes in so many matchups. Like it was Oh my god, I I lost so many times. <laughs> well, first is Phoenix is a filler in this deck, and two, Anthony is right. I did put a lot of fight. Um I did not want to take any amount of Arcade Phoenix. It took uh, multiple how many, teammates being yeah, how, how many, convinced. How many hours, Javier, did it take me and Isaac to convince, to, to persuade, the, for the two of us to persuade you to cut it, any at all? Yeah, how many yeah, hours do you it, think it, we spent total? It took some hours for some people, <laughs> very smart people with some very convincing arguments. But in my defense, I not only did agree to have that in the Cyber Guide, but I also actually cybered them out in the tournament. So, you know, <laughs> if you agreed to before the tournament, you really I, should do it during the tournament. <laughs> I know. No, what I mean is, like, not only I agree, but also, like, in every single spot, it was close. I actually yeah. just imagined this, like, small Anthony in my head, like, Shine without the Phoenix. And I don't sound I, like I, that. I, he does, yeah. He does. I don't know. It's not you. It's another fake Anthony. So, I actually was found cyborging out Phoenixes in the PT. So, that's how much that's convinced good. I got. Yeah, so it's. That, that's, yeah, yeah, so that's if you're if you want to hear more pioneer content, definitely check out the last episode we made last week, which was the analysis of the pro tour where Javier got ninth, and you know we talk about a lot about pioneer. So you know when pioneer season will go back, definitely uh, episode seventy one is the one to search for. But for now, uh, this was an all in modern episode. Uh, next week, I hope I'll have uh, an option ready of what to play at LMS Prague. But yeah, thank you everybody for listening. This episode 72 of Copa Magic with the Carnies. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Cheers.